It, it's not real. It's like spiritual. It's like this thing in our head, this philo philosophical idea that we have. But it doesn't really, he didn't really mean it. God said, now, now Peter, rise, kill, and eat. See all these unclean animals? I want you to eat them. And Sandra, if Brady Crumb were here, Brady Crumb would come in here and sit in front of this microphone and say, um, that uh, spiritual stuff is what kept me in the bondage of the Jehovah's Witness for I don't know how many years he was in there. Because they all said, now that doesn't really mean that. That's a spiritual thing. It doesn't really mean that at all. God said it, but no, Peter, Peter, don't. No, don't really do that. I was just, it was spiritual. Um, that is not true. The word, if you're going to say this has a spiritual application, I can tell you that the spirit realm is more real than you and I are, according to Scripture. Let me, let me continue on with her supposition. This was a spiritual application. I used to believe the same as you because it was preached that way in my church. I believe this way, Sandra, because I studied it out in the Scripture. However, when I read for myself further down, I realized it was a spiritual application, which means what? What does that mean? And according to what I'm hearing, what I'm reading here, it, it basically you're saying it doesn't mean anything. Or it, it means that Peter is supposed to guess at what God was saying here as some spiritual application. Since reading Leviticus 11, I realize also that God cannot contradict himself, and that is why he laid out the Leviticus laws of good and bad meat. There is no such law. There is no such law of good and bad meat that does not exist god never said now this is good eat this he didn't say now this is bad you can't eat that it's not what he said he said it was either clean or it was unclean let's let's deal with facts here it was bad to eat pork back then and it still is bad now no that's not what god said he didn't say it was bad he said it was unclean and then I'm getting the science today has found a parasite that lives on pork that 500 degrees of heat cannot kill. That's not mentioned in the Bible. Acts 10, 13, and there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, call not thou common. That's it. It's Sandra, that's it right there. That's the point that God is making. He's not changing. He's not contradicting his law. He told them, now the eagle and the, um, and the gyre eagle and the owl and, the, and the, that which have the cloven hoof and that which is in the, the oysters on the half shell. He didn't really say that. But he said those are unclean. God had proclaimed them unclean. But then... He said, what God hath cleansed, what God hath cleansed, that's not some spiritual, well, that it could really mean this or it could mean that. When you use the word spiritual, basically you're saying it's really up to us to find our own way on this. No, he's saying exactly what he means, and he wanted Peter to do that. He said, what I have cleansed, call not thou un." Clean. I'm going to open up my can here. Let me find it. Uh, where is quick verse here? Where is that verse that uh, maybe somebody can help me out here while I type this in? Uh, Thanksgiving. See, I just, I just, I remember a word out of a verse and I'm going, yeah, there, there it is right there. How about, uh, let's see here. Thanksgiving. No, 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 Thanksgiving. Ah! No, there it is. Hang on. Right, 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 right. Right. Ah, here we go. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good. How many? Every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer done it's over with there's no more argument um 
This was the spiritual application about God not being a respecter of persons that we should not be either. Also in the Ten Commandments, the law says not to kill, not to commit adultery, not to steal. That was wrong then, and it is still wrong now. Yeah, I agree with you. Even so, if it was in the Old Testament, the principles of right and wrong are still the same, and the law of good and bad foot. And see, you're using your... That's not the terminology used in the Scripture. And that's, that's how... Let me tell you something. Sandra, maybe... Maybe you're well-meaning in this. And, and here again, um, I, I'm just kind of examining everything that I do now because everybody, every time I make a move, every time I say a word, every time my finger goes up in the air, somebody's got to comment on it. And um, it's, I, I, I'm either going to have to start ignoring that or, or whatever, and it's just really not my nature. But I'm sitting here examining how I'm responding to this email. And I'm using very forceful language. I'm throwing in a little bit of humor. It sounds sarcastic. I, I don't mean, I don't know you, and I don't mean to be this way. I really don't. But I have to, I have to stand by the scripture. And I have to, it's, if you, if you don't, if you don't want to know what I have to say about this, don't ask me the question. But the question you ask me is that, that you think that you, you realize that or you thought that you were wrong and now you're saying that I am wrong because I eat pork, I eat oysters, mussels, shrimps, or excuse me, prawns. I eat these things. Why? Because they are cleansed with thanksgiving and with prayer and uh, they, are, they are sanctified by these things. And what God has cleansed, see, God didn't change the law. He cleaned the meat, is what he did. And I understand that it has to do, the, the, the big spiritual application has to do with Gentiles. But then the, the spiritual application cannot contradict the physical application. God did not tell Peter, now Peter, kill, kill and eat those things. No, no, don't really. I mean, I wasn't, I didn't really mean that. I was trying to get you to think something else. That God didn't act that way. He said what he meant to Peter. He said exactly what he meant. And he had two ideas in mind when he said it. Uh, let's see here. Vicky, How you doing, Vicky? Hi, Pastor Mike. Does Ephesians 4.11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers apply to today? Yes, it does. And I'll tell you how. Did, you have to ask yourself the question, did God give us apostles? Yes. One was named Peter. One was named John. One was named Paul. Um, they were the apostles. Um, they were the foundations of the church, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And in the New, in the new Jerusalem... All of their names are listed as being the, the foundation stones of the, uh, of the church. Now, does that office continue today? No, it doesn't. It has been replaced. In fact, it's, it's not even been replaced. The office of Paul is still active through the pages of the scriptures. Here's what you get when you get into latter-day apostles. Oh, this is apostle such and such. He is going to... You know what that means? You know what that means? That this guy can tell you that God said stuff and he can write doctrine. That's what he can do. And so anybody that shows up and it says, excuse me, I'm not bishop so-and-so. I am apostle so-and-so. He's telling you, he's wanting you to come under his dominion is what he's doing. Prophets, absolutely. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Enoch, Moses. Um, he, God gave them to us, and they are still active through the pages of the scriptures to this day. Uh, and then Ralph, who asked me about the sharper than any two-edged sword, wrote back and says, I missed that one. I stand with the word. Cool. Thanks. Appreciate that. Um, somebody writes in and says, is the subject Bible worth getting? I think it is. I don't have one, but I've seen one. Somebody brought one to the homecoming, and I think I like it. 
I think I do. So if, if you have a copy and if you've seen anything wrong in it, then write me in, write me a letter and let me know and I'll address it. All right. Joe, how you doing, Joe, says Pastor Mike, the Antichrist. Is he walking the planet now, and is he aware of who he is? No, I don't think Obama knows who he is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't think Obama's the Antichrist. I think he might think he is, and he doesn't have a problem with it, but I don't think he thinks the Antichrist. I, he is not the Antichrist. Uh, no, I don't think he is. Um, when you look at Revelation chapter 9, and you see, these, you see these animals coming out of the bottomless pit. The reason why they're there is that they are, they are nasty, vicious, mean, cruel. I mean, and they've only like got one nature, and that is to kill and to, and to eat up and do all this stuff that they did. That's why God locked them in prison. And I think if, they, if, if even the Antichrist, the beast of uh, the king of the bottomless pit, was running around back then, i got to turn my heating pad on. It's killing me. My heating pad is killing me. Um, I think if, the, if the, um, the beast was walking around right now, you would know it. Okay? Uh, you, I think you'd absolutely know it. So I don't think he is. Not yet. Fitting to be, but not quite yet. Louisa. Pastor Mike, God bless you for the work the Lord is doing through you. My question is, who is the angel of death? It is mostly used in the story of Exodus 11. Sorry that I insist, but I really want to know what it is. Can you do some research on it? Um, the angel of death, Exodus 11. Let me, boy, I'm going to have to open up my can here on this one. Um, the angel of death. Uh, let's see here death um, the, the phrase angel of death is not let me um, let me just double check here no matching verses were there is no according to the scripture no angel o death okay now in Exodus 11 what you have is what's called the destroyer in Exodus 12:23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and upon the two side posts. The Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. The destroyer is, in this case, it was a destroying angel. It was an angel. You could say it was an angel of death. But it's an angel that God released to kill. And it's interesting that if this angel's so bad, okay, uh, how can him only kill the firstborn? It was doing basically what it was designed to do, and God just let it loose, okay? It's kind of like uh, having a dog that you train for a certain task. All you got to do is just let it loose, and that's, that's exactly what it's going to do. And that's what he did. Now, there is something that has power over death, according to the scriptures, and that is Satan. The Bible says the God of this world, Satan, has power over death. And it was him that Christ came to destroy. He came to destroy the destroyer uh, when he died on the cross. And so there was an angel, there was an evil spirit, an evil angel, that God released upon the, uh, the land, as it were, in, um, in Exodus. It was referred to as the destroyer, and it only killed the firstborn uh, child out of those houses. Okay? Um, but I, I'm...